Well, I don't, have, I don't have to dial no number. I just go there and pull up Hamilton Chapel and just tap and it come right in. Okay. We see, I ain't, I ain't, I'm, I'm still old timey. <laughs> old fashioned, yeah. not old timey. Yeah, all right. Oh. Okay. Okay. Good morning. Anyone that's on this morning? Hello. Yes, our time's fast. Everybody else is slow or whatever. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Good morning, Rubin Lewis. <laughs> Good morning, Trustee Wu. Like everybody else, go back to bed. (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. No, I'm up for the day. I'm up for the day. Yeah, me too. Me too. Mm. I might stay in chair and sleep some, but uh, but you're up for the day. Facebook must not be on this morning. 
Father God, first of all, we just want to thank you this morning, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to come into your presence, God, at this hour, Lord. And then, God, we just give you glory and we give you praise, God, of this day. For you giving us the opportunity, Lord, to be in your house, Lord, one more time. And then, Father God, we invite your Holy Spirit, your anointing, God, into the Sunday school lesson this morning, God. Have your way, God, in this house. And then, God, teach us how to pray. Thanks to pray for us. Bless sick everywhere in rest homes and hospitals, Father. All those that are lying on their bed of affliction, Lord, this morning. And then, God, touch our Sunday school teacher, God, this morning. And then, Lord, not her fresh from the crown of her head down to the soles of her feet. Lord, down in your still house of wisdom and knowledge, Father, when she come forth, use her for your glory. Open up our spiritual ears, Lord, so we can understand the Sunday school lesson this morning. This prayer I lay before thee this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend Faison, for that wonderful uh, prayer this morning. Thank you, Mother Bond, for that song this morning. I still want to ask, is anyone on to take our minutes this morning? I'm um, Hamza, either uh, St. Stevens. Or we turn it over to Trustee Wooten. Because I get uh, Lois, so she Okay, Lois, thank so you. she'll take it to somebody else's phone. Okay, thank you very much. Now we have turn it over to Trustee Wooten this morning for our Sunday school this morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning to you this morning. Our lesson for today is from the book of Mark, the, the fifth chapter, verses 1 through 13 and 18 through 20. And the subject is Jesus overpowers legion. Now, the world, the world has its own standard of putting people in classes. And, you know, the mental illness... And even those with physical disability, they're often cast aside and rejected. But Jesus had a heart for them and dealt with them. And as our lesson began, it said, they arrived on the other side of the sea in the country of the Gadarenes. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> and just as Jesus stepped out of the boat, a man with an unclean spirit came out of the cemetery to him. Now, this man lived among the graves and had such strength that no one or nothing could restrain him, even with chains. Many times he was bound with chains and rope, but he always broke the chain and snapped the rope and walked away. No one was strong enough to control him. Night and day, they say he, he roamed the hills, crying and cutting himself with sharp objects. But when he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and bowed and worshipped before him. Now, he says that the man cried out with a loud voice and said, What business do you have, Jesus, son of the Most High God? Say, I swear by God, don't torture me. And then Jesus commanded the unclean spirits to come out of the man. Then Jesus asked the man, said, What's your name? And he said, my name is Legion, for there are many of us in this man. Then the demons begged the Lord not to send them out of the country. And uh, <clears throat> they looked up, a great herd of swine was, feed, was feeding on a nearby hillside. And the demon said, send us into the swine so we can live in them. Well, Jesus allowed, <clears throat> he allowed this. The unclean spirit entered the, the swine. And the herders of about 2,000 ran down a feet back into the sea and dry. Now, as, <clears throat> but as Jesus was, <clears throat> excuse me, but as Jesus was getting back in the boat, the man who Jesus delivered from demons begged to go with him, said, you know, he wanted to be one of his disciples. Jesus told him, said, no, go home to your friend. And tell them what wonderful thing God has done for you and how merciful he's been. And the man went back to the capitalist where he was from. He was telling everyone about the great things that Jesus had done for him. The people were amazed by his story. 
Now, as we look at some of the, the, the things in the story, some of the main points, and uh, before he came there, before he came to the capitals, first of all, just were teaching to the people. But the, as the evening come on, he told us, told the disciples, "Let's go across to the other side." And, and, and but as they were going across, a big storm arose. Now this is is in the fourth chapter of Mark, leading up to the time that he crossed over. He said, "Let's go across to the other side." And but as they started out, a big storm arose. And it was tossing the boat from side to side. The cycle was so afraid. Jesus was in the ship. He was sleep resting. He'd been teaching a lot. But uh, they woke him up and said, Master, don't you care whether we perish or not? And Jesus, he rebuked the wind and the sea. And he was commanding them to be, and commanding them to be still. The disciples stood in wonder. They were stunned and said, What manner of man is this? That even the, 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 even the wind and the waves obey his will. But, well, what, kind of, what kind of man is this? Now, you look at this, when you look at this, you say, Now, um, despite their privileged position, now these, these disciples had been with Jesus, they've seen him do miracles. That, you know, this was, they had seen many miracles, and they had a privileged position because they walked with him and talked with him, but others didn't. And, but they couldn't quite get this. They said, <laughs> them, they couldn't, couldn't understand the importance of Jesus' words and his deeds, and they did not understand, actually, who he really was. They had seen miracle workers, exorcists, Magicians all perform miracles, but only Jesus could steal the raging storm. So it makes you, <clears throat> the disciples had, you know, they had an advantage because it, it just goes to show you sometimes you're just not where you think you are. Because I'm sure a few lessons back, they were arguing about who were the greatest in the kingdom. They just knew they were in there and they wanted to know who was the greatest. But yet, they weren't where they thought they were. Because if they had, they would realize they had Jesus in the boat. I mean, they couldn't have been in a better spot because he was laying right there in the ship, sleep. And nothing was going to happen without his command. So they had a privilege, but yet they didn't know they was afraid. They had to wake him up and ask him, say, don't you care if we drown? So, but Jesus woke up. He rebuked the disciples for their little faith. He commanded the wind and the wave to be still. And then as soon as they got to the other side and he got out of the boat, uh, the first thing before he could even breathe was here come this demon to this man who no who no one or nobody could could bow. And he had some type of he had something like some type of superhuman strength. He was separated from everyone because he was so violent and nobody could manage. But just as Jesus stepped out of the boat, when he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and worshipped him. Well now at this point, you look at this word worship, he didn't worship him like we were. We worship him. You know, he worshiped him, trying to avoid him from being cast out of the man. He thought he could appease Jesus by, you know, running to him, worshiping him. But um, this was supposed to uh, please, you know, keep him from take Jesus' mind off taking him or casting him out. But he said, well, what, what business you got me? What you doing with me? What, why are you here? He said, no, he said, uh, uh, <clears throat> Jesus said, hey, you, you didn't come to bother me. Don't don't bother me. Don't torture me. You know, all that stuff. But now, now you listen to this. They wanted Jesus to have mercy on them. Don't cast them out of the country. But they didn't 
didn't have any mercy on the man whose body they lived in. And there were many of them, and they weren't planning on going anywhere. But Jesus allowed them to enter the swine. And when he allowed them to enter the swine, they thought, well, <laughs> we got it going on now. They thought they were being spared. It never occurred to them that they were being, they were running to their death. And so, you know, it, look at the, look at them. They had no mercy on the man, but they wanted the Lord to have mercy on them. And sometimes we can be like that too. We think about people who come into, you know, come into our church and, uh, we say, mm, here they come. I wonder how long they're going to stay this time and that stuff. But, you know, when we came to Jesus, uh, he had mercy on us. So we, we have to have mercy on other people too. And then the man, after he, after Jesus healed him, got him up, got him right. And, and uh, he wanted to become one of Jesus' disciples. And see, Although his intention was good, but Jesus directed him to a greater mission. He said, no, take the message home and evangelize there. That's where it's needed. He said, and, and, and this man became a forerunner to share the good news with the people of the capitalists. And see, and this is, a, this is something else that is very important. Listen, notice the disciple question says, what manner of man is this? Uh, uh, it, it, it suggested that Jesus had some great abilities that evidently they had not witnessed before. They could not believe what they saw. But yet, the demon-possessed man identified Jesus as the Son of God and had no problem acknowledging his power over them. That's what they were worried about because they know Jesus had power over them and he could cast them out. They didn't want to come out of the man. And these demons needed a body to live in. So they asked them to, be, to live in there, with the, to go to the swine and live in the swine. But they wanted anything but to be cast out and kicked out of the entire country. But Jesus gave him, he told him, he allowed it. They, they begged him, he allowed it. And look what happened. They didn't get away. It, it teaches us that, you know, you're not going to get away. You may get by for a little while, but you do not get away. Because God is, God is still in charge, and he, he sees all, he knows all, and he can do all. Mm -hmm. and, in his time, he will do it. That's right. But sometimes, you know, we continue on and on and on and doing what we were doing. But God's going to stop it all one day. Mm -hmm. We can't continually do these things and get away with it. Like I said, you get by sometimes for a little while, but you don't get away. These demons had tormented this man for it's no telling how many years. And the poor man, you know, evidently nobody could help him or nobody tried to help him. All they tried to do was restrain the man, tie him up and everything, and, and, and restrain him so that he won't hurt nobody else. They were more concerned about themselves, him hurting them, than, than him hurting himself. And you know a person who does that, who cut themselves with sharp objects and, and hard rocks and stuff, they can't be right. He needed the help, and maybe nobody was qualified to do it. But the thing of it is, he needed help more than he needed restraining everything. But but he said, but Jesus told him, said, now, you know, the demons didn't want to come out. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Please let us, let us stay. Jesus said, come out. He says, come out. When God tells you something, it's going to happen. Amen. And no matter what you want, if that's not what God's plans are, you can forget it. You have to ask God, what do you want me to do? See, all the demon was asking for was, was a chance to, if they had to come out of the man, they didn't want to come out. They didn't want him to cast them out. But if they did, if he did, what they wanted.
want to do was they want to know, can we go into somebody else? Yeah, well, if the, give us, let us go into the swine. But see, uh, <clears throat> Jesus said, okay, he let them go. And it, and, and they really, they didn't, you know, they didn't get their wish. They thought they was free. They thought that all of this would have been, you know, here they will occupy some, another body and live on and on and on. So the demon and evil, evil wants to live and evil likes to prosper. Evil want to make sure that they are always got some backup, always got somebody bound. But see, God cast them out. And he says, you know, you've got to go. So they say, well, if we go into the swine, at least we can live. But, but that's not so. The swine started running. And you see what evil spirits can do to you. The mm -hmm. swine started running. And look what happened. They ran down a cliff and all 2,000 drowned. Amen. And see, this question the disciples had said, what, when, when they was on the ship, I only see this. What matter, man, is this? And but the demon to this man, he answered. The, he really answered their problem. He said uh, he identified Jesus as the Son of God, and, and, and he had no problem acknowledging his power over them. That's what they were so afraid of. The people, the disciples, had an external storm. It was a storm outside of them on the sea. But the demon possessed man had an internal storm. He was troubled from uh, from every day. He was troubled all day, all night. And that got to be a very, very bad uh, situation to be in. And you see, even the ungodly recognize Jesus. He recognized who Jesus is. And he confessed his power. But and he answered, he actually answered the disciples' question. The man said he is Jesus, the son of the most high God. You know, it it pays us sometimes to check ourselves. We really take inventory and do a spiritual examination because we need to make sure we have what we think we have or have what we need. Because sometimes, you know, you think you, you're going along and it looks like things are going pretty good and you're praying, you're reading, and all you say, well, you know, I must be right. But then something comes along that just knocks you off your block. And then you wonder, the Lord, you know, you, you just wonder if you really have what you thought you had. And you find out then, then for sure that, that you need to go back. You need to go back and get some more. Because so many times, you don't know what's going to happen. So you go through one storm, God prepares you for the next one. Because he, he knows some more coming. And each one is supposed to make you stronger and stronger. And see, the disciples had been with him and seen a lot of things that he done. And so they, I guess they thought they had seen most all the miracles. But then when the storm came, they woke him up. Uh, you know, they was in the best place you could be. If Jesus mm -hmm. is with you, I don't care where you are, you're in a good mm -hmm. spot. Mm -hmm. Because he's the one who can take care of everything. Yeah, and, right. they, they, and so they, they couldn't, they were so afraid they woke him up. They, they, I, are you concerned about us at all? The, all this storm out here on the ocean and all that? But Jesus said, Jesus didn't worry about it. Jesus got up and he rebuked them for their lack of faith. Then he oh, told man. the wind and the waves to, to peace be still. Mm -hmm. Everything calmed down. The disciples like, wow. Say, good. Well, who, and what kind of man is this? Well, so they should have known that Jesus could have done anything. Mm -hmm. And that shouldn't, have, that shouldn't have been a surprise to them. But it was. And you know, as we check ourselves, we say, Lord, I, I think I got this down pat. I think I got the down pat. But just wait till a storm come. Wait till testing time. And you'll find out whether you have what you thought you had or not. It doesn't make you mean that you're bad. It doesn't mean anything. But I'm just saying, 
when we check out and say, do a spiritual checkup and, and see if we got what we thought we had or if we got what we need. And then when the, when the storms of life come on us, then we got something to work with. Because God is the one that we're going to have to have that connection with him. And we're going to have to be to a point that when the storms of life come, we're going to have to say, okay, Lord, I don't know what I'm supposed to learn through all this test. I don't understand why I'm going through it, but I do know you're in charge, and you mm-hmm. see it all. You see what's going on with me. You know what I need to do, and you know what I need to go through to get to where you want me to go. Mm-hmm. And testing time can be rough, and we all going to have some testing time. Mm-hmm. And some of us, we might, you know, we don't want to be like the disciples. Says, what kind of man it is? We know what kind of man he is. We can look at our life and see what kind of man he is. Uh-huh. And stay with him and we continue to stay in his word and, and continue to to apply the word. Now, we can one thing for us to read it, uh, and, but apply the word. And, and these people that turn against, these people that was afraid of this man and all, by the time he went back to his village, you know, they couldn't believe it. And to see, when he preached and telling them all of what happened and they knew he was the same man, boy, they wanted to know about that. They wanted to know more and more and more. And he said, you know, <clears throat> if, uh, if we think, you know, before the storms come, we need to know about some of this stuff. You see, the thing about it, and, and as you look at this list and you think, now, if the demons know, we ought to know. If the demons knew who Jesus was, then, then you know, we ought to know who Jesus was. And the disciples asked him what kind of man is this that can do all this stuff. And you would have thought they would have known they had been walking with Jesus and, and, and seeing his teaching and seeing his miracle all those years. You would think that they would know. But the mm-hmm. demons knew right away. Mm-hmm. He knew all the way. Said, "Oh, what you come for? What business we got? I ain't got no business with you." Um, and, and then they started begging because they knew when Jesus come on the scene, Jesus had the power to cast them out. He could kick them out of the country. They didn't want mm-hmm. to do it. He didn't let them do it. He didn't. He didn't kick them out of the country. But they they went to a quick death. They thought they had it made. They thought they had escape route once they had gotten gotten into the swine. So we look at this stuff, you know, the, the, the demons is just like some of us. We don't mind uh, God giving us a break, but we don't give nobody else a break. So we have to be careful how we deal with stuff like this. First thing we have to do, we have to stay in the Word. We have to stay in prayer. We have to stay in fasting and all of that. And when you, when you do that, you know, you keep that line open to God because and any time you need, to need him, you just dial it up. You keep that line open to God. And then, because you know, he said in this world, we're going to have trouble. And, and then mm-hmm. I think, I don't know of any of us who hasn't experienced this already. There's trouble sometimes on every hand. There's family. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's family. Sometimes it's co-working. Sometimes it's the job. You don't know if it's going to last much longer. And sometimes, and sometimes it's your church. Amen. But you got, you know, all of this is going to come. And if you notice, it seems like when you get through one trial, the next trial that comes is even harder. But this mm-hmm. is what he's preparing us for, the test. Mm-hmm. And, and we want to be to the point that we don't have to ask what amount of man is here. We're going to be able to recognize him right away. In that instant, we'll be just like, just like the man, the demons and the man, uh, 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 they, they knew that when the God was recognized, their time won't long. One way or the other, they would, they know that they won't be cast out. They begged, but they didn't get an answer. But God, God has a plan for each one of us. And we don't always know what the plan is. And, and you know, we go through this and we go through that. And it's just like when Joseph, you know, when, when, when Joseph's brother put him in the pit, they, they put him in there for him to die, but then they decided to sell him. Well, Joseph had, he, 
he kept his mind on on God. But the thing about it was that you know that he was so he knew that God had his hand on him. He knew God had plans on. But look what he had to go through to get there. It was like time he get out of one situation, here's another one. And then the people that promised to remember him, they forgot all that. And, and, and it's like everything was going against him. But David could have said like a lot of uh, like a lot of people have said, if it weren't for bad luck, I wouldn't have no luck at all. But you're not having bad luck. Luck has nothing to do with it. This is the path God has laid out for you. Mm -hmm. And if every step that you take gets you stronger for the next step. Look at the step that Joseph went through before he finally got to the where he was where God had planned for him. Mm -hmm. So God knows that we're gonna go through some stuff here. He's already told us that. So when these troubles come, what we're gonna have to do, uh we don't have to work for this day. We don't have any good times. We don't have to really store up all that we know how to store up so that when the hard times come, all we have to do is just reach in there and pull out grace and mercy and all of those things that God has already stored up for us. Mm -hmm. You see, you know, we are called to trust and have faith. And, and to do that, we must know and confess who Jesus is. He is none other than the Holy One of God. Everything is under his control. Mm -hmm. and, and the community, now the community will isolate people. They'll push them over there. They're the ones that kind of seem like they call them misfits. They don't fit into society like they think they should. They have them incarcerated and all of that stuff. But Jesus get to the root of the problem. Mm -hmm. He restored them as four persons. He restored that man. And the man would like it never happened. And see, that's a good thing about it. Jesus can just, he can just wipe the whole slate clean and start you over again. Mm -hmm. he, re he restores us as full person. And, and, you know, and it's a testimony to Jesus' power, not only to heal, but also to deliver and transform one from demon possession to one who proclaims the good news. Now, this man went from being bound, demon possession, uh, being a dangerous man. Nobody could contain him. Nobody could restrain him. He went from being that to one who who delivers and, and to one who spreads the good news. Calm man. A man who who wants to follow Jesus. And, and, and it just it's just great. A man, he's a, now he's a man who wants to, who proclaims the good news. Jesus has a way of doing it. He, when he went over there, it's just like the lesson we had a few Sundays back when he went to the well, met the woman at the well. That was the purpose. He sent the disciples on and he waited because he knew she was coming. Well, when Jesus told the disciples that, let's cross over to the other side. Well, when he told them that, he had a purpose in mind. He knew those people, though, they needed him. Mm -hmm. and, and and he was going, he crossed over to help this man and let this man be a testimony to the community. Because in uh, the, um, the lesson I read, it says that in that area, that was, you know, Satan had a good hold on the capitalists and those 10 cities in there. And Satan won't like it. He didn't want to give it up. Well, see, when Jesus comes, I don't care what you got. If Jesus said, give it up, you're going to give it up. Amen. And so he crossed He crossed over there because he knew the people needed him. He knew that was a demon-possessed man who could really be a testimony for him. And that he could, the community could look at him and say, now that's a miracle. That's God. That is a miracle. So what I'm saying is that we are going, when we see these people like this, they need our prayers. We, cause the society call them misfits and they want to cast them aside and put them out there and they go around. They don't want to speak to them. They don't want, they don't want to deal with them. And, and if they see them, you know, they don't even speak to them. They just kind of cross the street or go around the other way. That's not what God did and that's not what he wants us to do. Those people that are bound that have some Problems and everything. God wants us to pray for them. 
pray with them. And that is that is one of our mission here on this earth. So we think, and you know, Jesus had come to deal with the most serious and the most severe issues. He deal with it from the inside to the outside. The mm-hmm. human race, the, 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 the human race internal and external, the inside and the outside storm. Sometimes our storm is within. And like I said, sometimes you, you're going through a lot with family situation, relationships and stuff like that. That's your, uh, you're going through that. That's your internal storm. Sometimes the storm is outside of you, but we all are going through some storm mm-hmm. and we ain't finished yet. Mm-hmm. We will be going through storms until we leave this world. But if Jesus goes with us, we can go anywhere and do anything. That's the thing about it. The disciples had Jesus right there with them. They didn't really have nothing to worry about, but they didn't know it. But if they had not, they were not at the level that they should have been. And so sometimes we are either. And we have to think about, you know, on what metal song come and that'll show you where you are. But God tell us no matter where we think we are, how low we think we are, he can restore us. He can pick us up. Look what he did for this man. This man, you know, Probably now we were wearing suits and, and, and wearing clothes and preaching and proclaiming the word of God. And everybody was so scared of him before. They All they did was a bunch of people the other side time down restraining. And he just worked loose and go hit on. But then he comes by. Look how Jesus calmed that man's storm. And he will calm our storm too. Mm-hmm. He's going to calm our storm. And when our storm arises, we can give them over to him. And he will speak to them, saying, Peace, be still, Mm -hmm. and all of them to cease. Mm -hmm. Are there any comments? Yes, ma'am. I just want to say I thank God for you this morning, and I thank you for that awesome lesson. And that you can say those people were in the ship, and they they asking God, do you Christ about the wind and the rain and all of that good stuff? And then he said, what little face you have. But uh-huh. but God ain't going to put no more on us than we can bear. Christ, he bear all of it, the whole world thing. Uh-huh. And, and God took care of him. We ain't nothing but filthy rags to Christ. And he right. done it all for us. And uh-huh. like God said, he ain't going to put no more on you than you can bear. That's right. You want, if you want to go the right way, he there with you. He with you at all times. So it's us, up to us to get on the right track and do our Father will and do it in the right way. Uh-huh. Okay. Any other comments? And, and you know that man that was had all them demons. You know he has he had the faith in him that one day he won't want, he was gonna meet God to get them demons from him, where he could live his life just like other people. That you say he uh, went down in the town in the community and preached and told folks all about what happened to him. So you know he had faith in God. Yeah, and the good thing about it, he recognized God. Uh-huh. Yeah, he recognized God before from a distance, and he knew what was about to happen. The demon knew what was about to happen. Mm-hmm. And the demon recognized God from a distance. Go to show you that, you know, no matter what the devil thinks, he can do, but he, can, he can't overpower God. That's all right. Mm-hmm. So sometimes, when, you know, when you're worried, it looks like one storm piled up on top of another storm and another storm. But the thing about it, God looking right at it. Yeah, he knows, that's right. He knows when they come in and say, peace, be still. That's right. That's right. Are there any other comments? Yes, please, Nancy. What I got out of it was I learned that um, Jesus took the time out to hear 
what the demons inside the man was saying, and he requested their wish. But at the same time, Jesus' work was still done. You know, yeah. you, 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 they asked, and he, he did it. He provided what they asked. But at the end, his work was still done. So I learned that no matter what um, takes place, and you can ask somebody to change this, at the end of the day, God going to fix it. It's going to be his way. So yeah. that's what I got out of it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then I want to say one more thing. If we take Steph out of the picture and put God in everything, everything else will be okay. Put God first. Remove That's Steph. That's right. When we we get to, you know, we sometimes fix our, uh, we have our list and now I want to do this, that, and that today. And we fix it up and we present it to God and want him to bless it instead of asking God, telling God, this is what I would like to do, but what do you have for me to do? That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Out there, any other comments? Thank you for that awesome lesson. Yeah, I really did enjoy the lesson. I have a lot to do. I enjoyed it. Well, I'm glad you did. I really enjoyed the Sunday school lesson this morning. I also learned from it that um, just the sign of, of his name, which is Jesus, can change yes. the whole atmosphere. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I'm glad. Is it, anybody else have any comment? If there aren't any other comments, this concludes our Sunday school lesson for today. We, we do, we, we do. Thanks, uh, just people looking for that lesson, wonderful lesson this morning. I know we done had some remarks about the lesson. Do anyone else have any remarks over the lesson this morning about the yes, lesson? Right. This morning? <laughs>
Thank you, Deacon Ricks, uh, and thank you, Trustee Wooten, and everyone that's taken part in the Sunday School this morning. Uh, what a wonderful lesson this morning. We thank God for each of you. At this point in time, we're going to prepare ourselves and proceed forward with our devotional this morning.